Welcome. We're live here at the Chicago Midwinter, and I'm here today with Tammy Filipiak, who's the president of ADHA, and she's also the vice president of clinical development with Midwest Dental. So really excited to see you, Tammy. Yeah, Thank you for do spending some time with us this morning. It's so hard to believe that we did this a year ago with Ann Patrell, the CEO of uh, um, ADHA. It seems like we were just here. So this yeah. is, maybe we'll make this an annual event. So we'll keep rotating all the great leaders and from ADHA to have these chats to help inform our dental community and the hygienists, all the exciting things that are going on at ADHA. Yeah, it's Henry amazing Shine, so. how fast yes. time flies. Isn't it? I yeah. know, it really is. So let's get right into it. You know, the overall dental industry is changing so much in many ways. The landscape is changing, the types of dental practices, and that really affects the job market. So could you spend a little bit of time talking about how the, the dental industry and the job market has changed for dental hygienists? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a great question, and I, I find myself in this spot now, you know, practicing for being a dental hygienist for over 30 years now, thinking about how things have changed. And one of the things that often comes to mind to me is um, we had so fewer places to practice as a dental hygienist years ago, and we've really seen that landscape change where dental hygienists are starting to work in, in places uh, that patients can more directly access them. Uh, we have over 40 states now across the country where patients can directly access a dental hygienist. That means they can see them first and then they can be referred um, for additional care as needed with a dentist. Um, we see dental hygienists integrated into more healthcare type facilities. Uh, Colorado is a great example where we have dental hygienists working within uh, medical clinics. Uh, we see the benefit to patients in situations like that where there's interprofessional collaboration, so patients are really getting a whole healthcare model of treatment. And I think it's really exciting for dental hygienists to have those kind of opportunities. Um, outside of that, I would say uh, there's many other roles, you know, whether it's a corporate working for organizations like yours or we see different models of delivery for dental care that are less traditionally um, set up as like a private practice. While those still exist, they'll always exist. Just lots of exciting places for dental hygienists to work today. So is so what, what is the percentage of hygienists like making that change into kind of the new models of practice, number one? And number two, does ADHA provide training and resources for that, for that kind of career opportunity? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if I, if I know the percentage okay. exactly, but what I would say is I have a sense that um, dental hygienists are finding uh, ways to um, provide care and use their their knowledge in different places today. ADHA is absolutely a resource for those types of things. We have a career center within our uh, website. Mm -hmm. uh, we have focused uh, a number of our continuing education programs most recently on some of those uh, types of, of issues related to career development. And one of our primary objectives within our strategic plan is to support dental hygienists throughout their life cycle of their career. You know, if I'm starting out, I have needs that might be different than later on in my career. Um, and we have a real focus on career development with our annual conference this year, too. So uh, lots of different places where that information is available. You know, so that's really, that, that trend is really exciting because it gives more patients, I assume, access to dental care by seeing the hygienist and then referred to the dentist if need be. So that's really a really interesting trend. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that since last year, it's expanded. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, dental hygienists are uh, very prevention focused. Um, we play an important role in uh, seeing the patient early on. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that, you know, the delivery of preventive care and having access to care is important for us to be able to impact the prevalence of disease. So, yeah, I completely agree with you. It's it's exciting to see. It's yeah. it's exciting to have seen the trend change, too. Certainly. The evolution and, of it. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. really great. Now, uh, Tam, you have an interesting uh, career path, and you've been involved with ADHA for a long time, and currently the president of ADHA. So we all know as professionals how important mentoring is. Actually, we're doing uh, later on today another, another Shine Chat with our CEO, Stan Bergman, uh, and ADA president, Dr. Joe Crowley, on mentorship. So I want to 
ask you, how has mentoring helped you in your professional career? And how does the association work with your members in matching up or how you work with mentorships for your members? But first, let's hear, hear your story. Yeah, I, um, well, thank you, because it's been an interesting story. Sometimes I, uh, you know, at times I've, I've sort of pinched myself to say, did that really happen to me? I do that all the time. Um, you know. I've, I've had the opportunity to work within a, a variety of different clinical practice settings, um, both general and specialty. I've had some time in dental hygiene education. Um, I have always had a common thread, e e leading even to the role that I, that I have today, um, that ADHA has played such an important part in that for me. So when you talk about mentors, um, people you look at and say, you know, there's something I can learn from that in individual. I think depending on where I was at in my career, it was different. Mm -hmm. And so as a student, I looked at my dental hygiene educators and said, my gosh, they're different. What can I take from each of them and how can they help me? You know, you get out of edu that educational place. I had the great pleasure to work in specialty practice. And so I learned a, a whole different level of skill set related to communication working in that setting. You know, dental hygiene education as an educator, you know, you're working with administrators and you start to develop and get a sense of the importance of, of a business skill set. And all of those things, I think, um, just uh, bubbled up, if you will, to um, uh, really great opportunities that seem to come my way. And, uh, you know, opportunity sometimes finds you, sometimes you find it, but I've absolutely had just an amazing, amazing list of mentors along the way. And so I, I think it's so important to identify those people and stay connected to them. I, I think it's one of the greatest things that comes through ADHA as well, is that networking and getting connected to people. So, um, you, you know, and mentorship is so important and you have had Deservedly so. Uh, it looks like a really interesting journey in your professional career. And you've stayed involved with ADHA, the association, throughout your career path and now as the president. Is it, that just been something you've always wanted to, to do, is r rise in the ranks at ADHA? Yeah, I, you know, I tell the story about being a student. As a student member, and I was a student delegate back in, in 1987, and uh, looking at the individuals around me and saying, you know, there's a real passion here. There's a, a sense of wanting to make a difference in your profession. And so while I think my involvement and activity level ebbed and flowed with the places I was at in my life, you know, raising children, I never was not involved with the association at some level. And so, yeah, it's just always been there for me. And as I look back now, decades later, I can see where ADHA led me to so many different people, mentors, and opportunities. That's so great. What a great example you are, I'm sure, to the young members and membership that you have, as other leaders are at ADHA, Anne, and so many others. Our close association with, uh, with, your, with your group, we see that first, firsthand. So let's shift the conversation just a bit to, you know, what are the educational resources that are available through the association that can help you know, your members aspire to move into leadership or work out in the community or work on societal issues. So talk a little bit about what what you, what you ADHA is doing now, because I know in probably the last year, things have changed and evolved. Yeah, I, I think we see many dental hygienists who continue to advance their education, you know, which builds a skill set for them to be able to get into some of these other uh, areas that we talked about earlier. Um, within ADHA's resources in our website, we have a tremendous amount of continuing education that's available, live programs on demand, um, practice resources so that you can feel confident that you know what you can do um, in whatever area you're going to work in. Um, really excited uh, with our upcoming annual conference, a tremendous amount of learning opportunities there. You know, you, we can talk about formal dental hygiene education or we can talk about continued learning and it's really a life cycle, I think, in your journey, in your professional journey. So lots of great things happening uh, coming up at our annual conference, hands-on lecture programs, general sessions. So we really do support dental hygienists in a lot of different ways as it comes to education and continued learning. And I think you're doing things throughout the year now. Outside yeah. of the annual session, you have educational opportunities through webinars and online and things exactly. so that the, throughout the year, 
if you're, in, or if you're not able to go to the annual session, you have opportunities to stay connected to ADHA. Absolutely, yeah. So in our last couple minutes here, like, what do you envision as you know, key priorities for the association and how things have evolved you know, because of all the changes in the dental industry? So what do you see as some key priorities for not only the association, but your members and possibly your corporate sponsors, your, your, the people that collaborate with, with you? Yeah, uh, great question. I think, uh, you know, uh, higher level, of course, we are working toward um, unity within our profession. And so uh, we want to unite, empower, and always support dental hygienists through the life cycle of their career. I think um, when we when we have partners like Shine, um, we know that you help us get to those uh, goals in a lot of a lot of different uh, ways. I have often said there's no better time to be a dental hygienist, and I feel like I say that this week and then I'll say it next week. But I really do believe that because technology, um, the enthusiasm about the impact we can make to oral um, and total health is is just amazing today. Um, we have the ability to connect with people in a different way. You know, this is a great example of how we can connect to our community. Um, social media, all of those things give us a chance to really serve our population and our community of dental professionals. And these types of partnerships are really important for us to get there. Well, you know, we appreciate the collaboration with ADHA. Uh, it's very meaningful to us as an organization. It's been a great journey for us the last two decades, I believe. Yeah. And you know, we, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. And we really do these chats because we know that people are gonna go online later. And if this conversation impacts one hygienist right. to look at you know, your career and how you've evolved, not only through ADHA, but in the profession as the vice president of uh, clinical development. I mean, that's a real uh, testament to what you've done with your career. So if this impacts one hygienist out there, that's why we do these things. We hope that we'll you know, continue to get good activity and viewing from these chats because we really feel very proud of, proud of them. Yeah. And we know that it's helping change some lives out there. So Tammy, I really thank you. It's been great fun yeah, to thanks, see Michelle. you again and be with you together yeah, today. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. And we hope you enjoy the chat with Tammy Filippiak. Thank you.